They say you can live your entire life in tiger country and never lay eyes on a tiger. They're such secretive, stealthy, and peerless predators. Tigers dominate everything else in the forest. This female is looking for something to eat. Sadly for her, the odds are not in her favor. For every 10 tries, she'll make just one successful kill. Her prey holds an unlikely advantage. Seek a deer startle easily. To catch such a fleet animal, the tigers must get very close. Camouflage gets her only so far. Deer are vigilant to every sound, smell, or darting movement. This time, they're not worth her energy. She needs to save fuel. <clears throat> Especially in this weather. She's a mother with two cubs to feed. A male and a female, just about a year old. They're both still a long way from independence. These cubs are lucky. Their mother is an expert hunter. They won't starve. Soon, they'll have to learn how to hunt for themselves. One good meal every day, because this is Russia's Far East, where winter temperatures of minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit are not unusual. For thousands of years, Siberian, also known as Amur tigers, have occupied the southeastern corner of Russia. 14,000 square miles of wilderness that's been set aside as wildlife preserves within a pristine mountain range called the Sakote Alin, otherwise known as Tiger Paradise. Here, forests are brimming with game, like wild boar and sika deer. My family and I have lived in this forest for generations. We're known as a streak of tigers. These preserves are our last stronghold. 600 of us tigers now live in Russia's Far East. We are the biggest of all wildcats cats that need room to range and to hunt, especially if you're the dominant male like me. I share my territory with several females. One of them is the tigress, mother of our cubs. Soon, these cubs will have to leave to make way for new cubs. The young male will have to wander like a nomad until he finds his own paradise. The search could be dangerous. Some cats range so far, they leave the safety of the preserves, a risk for any young tiger. Just a few decades ago, tigers in Russia were hunted to near extinction. Humans captured and sold cubs to zoos and circuses across the globe. Adults fared even worse. Dozens of us were killed by special brigades every year. 
our numbers dwindled to some 30 individuals. Humans were the enemy. Today, it's a different story. Tigers are protected all over the world. And with protection comes a certain notoriety. These researchers are here to study our behavior. We're charismatic megafauna. So they're setting up camera traps all through my forest. They want to know all sorts of things. How we tigers communicate. At what age do cubs learn to hunt? Aren't they cute? How much space do tigers need? And how many of us will crowd around a single home range? When are we most active? And how often do we mark our scent to send a message to other tigers? They even want to know if we migrate, the way humans seem to do. It's taken 80 years of rigorous conservation to see our population recover here. But there's a catch. The more tigers that survive, the more space we require to thrive. We can only travel so far north before food becomes scarce better to stick it out among a diversity of other creatures. The Sakote Alin mountain range is unique in this way. Both subarctic and subtropical species survive here and make this area their home. And who or what wouldn't want to live in this primeval paradise? Breeding pairs of paradise flycatcher arrive here in May from Southern Asia. The toil of raising young is shared by the parents. A sighting of a paradise flycatcher is rare. While Sika deer are numerous, especially here in the Southern part of our region. After a long winter, deer are malnourished. Not only are they quenching their thirst, these deer seek out vital minerals in the mud that supplement their diet of grasses, leaves, fungi, and ferns. sense my presence. And there's a baby, too. One of them sounds the alarm. At least the herd knows who's boss around here. This is my young buck now. I'm going to get a good feed before I cash this carcass to hide it from scavengers. The cub's mother would surely share the kill with them. But if I'm going to keep my crown, I share with nobody. The food is making me drowsy. Time for a good nap.
Across the rest of Russia, the job of top predator belongs to bears. Bears are some of the most adaptive mammals on Earth. Omnivores that forage on berries or nest eggs or smaller mammals. And when the river comes into season, a diet rich in fresh salmon. Every four years, the breeding cycle of salmon peaks. Great numbers of fish appear in the upper reaches of mountain streams where they spawn before they die. All a tiger has to do is pick up a ready meal. I'm happy for the chance to fatten up for winter. Because in mountains like these, not every year brings a season of plenty. A meager harvest hits us cats just like every other creature. Some tigers will resort to hunting a bear cub or look for food where humans live. And that's when the trouble begins. Bad stuff happens when tigers leave the forest. Someone got caught on camera. Cats versus dogs, same old routine. Must have been one hungry tiger. The village of Katusovka lies on the western edge of the mountains, just outside the tiger preserve. 100 or so humans, and now one fewer pet. Last night, a tiger took out another dog chained up in the yard. Yuri Kolpak and his team of tiger experts have been called in to investigate. Kolpak's team work with both state authorities as well as the Amor Tiger Center, a conservation group. Their mission is pretty straightforward, de-escalate conflict between tigers and humans. Not much to go on, a collar and a few tufts of fur. It wasn't me, and I hope it's none of the tigers in my family streak. No one wants an attack like this to happen again. Cole Pack and his guys are pretty good at finding us, for humans. The team will build a profile of the problem tiger with any evidence they find or record. I want to know who it is, too. Autumn comes to Russian tiger country, sweetly at first. My cubs are nearly two years old now. Their mother is about to stop feeding them, a signal that it's time to find a way to live on their own. The male cub is not so little anymore. He already dwarfs his sister. It won't bother me too much if the female remains near her mother, but the male He's got to go. For us, territory is everything. Without it, a tiger can't live for long. Finding unclaimed land will be the biggest challenge of my son's life. With any luck, his first year of independence will be fat with opportunity. If trees indeed communicate with one another, then the Russian Far East forest is like an opera. One tree here knows all the parts, the Korean pine. 
Every year, these pines bear their signature fruit, pine cones. Every fourth year, there's a boom. Everyone profits. Wild boar, eager to fatten up before winter, gorge on the dense protein. In fact, humans love Korean pine wood and nuts so much, they've become guardians of the tree, just as they protect us tigers. Siberian chipmunks exploit the pine boom, too. On sunny slopes, the Manchurian oak is another prolific provider. Filling the ground until it's thick with acorns. Bounty rains down from the trees, which means deer numbers go up. All very good news for tigers. My patch of tiger paradise includes a remote river basin. Some call this vast area the Russian Amazon for its diverse wildlife. And not just the four-legged variety. It's also home to the Udige nation of hunter-gatherers who make a living from what grows under the canopy. Yeah, I know this human. Klim comes here every year. He's after small game. Sable for its fur. An animal that small is pretty worthless to me. Still, they thrive particularly well in the cold. And Clem goes to a lot of trouble to trap them. Look how absorbed he is by his contraption. Rather clumsy. Humans can't just bite down and break the neck of their prey. Clem must wait until winter for a sable to finally take the bait. Udige have populated Russia's far east for centuries, but tigers were here first for tens of thousands of years. Clem knows we're never very far away. Look, he's checking to see how recently one of us walked by. Clem's golden rule, keep away from tigers. Winter comes quickly, almost overnight. And what have we here? My son is going to try out his brand new hunting skills. In the deep cold winter of Russia's far east, every creature must fight to survive in heavy snowpack. My son, the young male, is among them. He has to make a kill or he'll freeze. You'd be forgiven if you thought catching a prey animal is easy. Deer have incredible reflexes. A simple shift in the wind could tip off a tiger scent. If 
they see my cub or smell him, it's game over. These deer were too fast. My son can't afford to lose the calories it would take to run one down. He'll learn. Thousands of miles of pristine woodland should be ample space for a young male to establish a home territory. but the land must be clear of other powerful, healthy males already in command. Like kings, we patrol all the borders of our range. Our spray and rubbing our scent serve as a guardrail to protect our domain, our prey animals and our females. No young male should mess with us old guys. The message is clear, all mine. By December, the river freezes over. As soon as the ice is solid, Klim can go hunting. I'll let him take a few animals, but Klim tends to focus on his cash crops. Furry sable, plus fish, berries, medicinal plants. He's too absorbed with his traps to bother a tiger. A few of us hunt this land, one of my females and I. We'll each take down 60 or 70 animals a year, mostly deer, elk, and wild boar. Clem takes notes on where we are. I keep an eye on him too. We're fortunate. This is one of the only places where there's no human-tiger conflict. Klim knows never to steal meat from a tiger's quarry. That's taboo. And he believes killing a tiger brings bad luck. Over the years, Klim's people have been pushed further into remote territory, same as tigers. In fact, we wouldn't have this wilderness if it weren't for the Udige, protection for both our sakes. Our fates are interwoven. Udige and tigers, both fueled by a desire to hold on to our precious sovereignty. Here comes one of my females now, doing what she does best. This huntress knows her game. how to get exactly what she wants.
Well, well, well. One young deer. Grazing alone. Away from the herd. What could be better? For a hungry tigress. Jaws finished the job. What a solid kill. She'll need a safe place to store her prize so she can feed on it for days. Because Arctic temperatures of 20 below take no prisoners. That holds for these crows as well. A few noisy birds don't bother my tigress. She has plenty of meat. The carcass will sustain her and other forest friends for the next couple of days. Bones, blood, and all. All clear, guys. Dinner. From a distance, crows don't look that big, unless you're a weasel. He's gonna figure it out, how to get his share. Give it a rest, will ya? just over the range of the glorious Akote Alim. My young son has wandered westward, still looking for a place to live. He doesn't know it yet, but he just crossed the border of the preserve. Poor guy's never seen a human settlement before. This could get ugly. How strange it sounds and smells. If they keep it up, losing this much timber could spell our doom. Well, the canine sense of smell is still intact. This guy's the first to pick up the scent of the feline invader. It's my son. The young male's about to get his first taste of civilization.
Ah, oh, now the humans are on to him. I wish it was some other unlucky cat out looking for food. But now, he's my own flesh and blood. Ah, oh, he's got away. Not every tiger is so lucky. Year by year, human life expands deeper into wild places. For us tigers, contact with humans verges on tragedy. We're still on the black market, our pelts and our bones. Good morning, Katusovka. Nothing much to report around here, unless you're a dog. Another canine life has been taken. Chained up, they're almost too easy. Cole Pack and his team of tiger specialists think a tiger's at work. They're setting a trap for the cat. The trap triggers a radio signal that will alert the team so they can tranquilize the animal as quickly as possible. At least that's the plan. Better not be my boy. Back in the cabin, the men compare images captured by camera traps they set up around the village. One particular female keeps showing up. Who is she? I hope she's not another tiger from the home streak. The entire town is on alert. In the ancient rivalry between cats and dogs, it's no contest. Night belongs to the tiger. Quiet, stealthy, and when you least expect us, we run you down. As usual, dogs are the first to sound the tiger alarm. The next day, the town discovers more grim news. Two dogs have been killed one devoured on sight. The humans gather the few clues that remain. Everything suggests that the rogue tigress is back. And it looks like whoever she is, she's still on the loose.
Cole Pack and the Tiger team head to the forest nearby. The size of the paw prints confirm it's the female. I've seen this drill before. The humans are going to try to catch and sedate her. She knows they're after her. Carefully, the humans move in on the mystery tigress. Animal and man, both waiting for the perfect opportunity. Got her. She's been hit with a tranquilizer dart. She'll go down soon. I have no idea which clan this tigress belongs to. She looks young, which is good news. In a few weeks, she'll be moved to a wilderness area to the west, far away from trouble. She may not live as long in the wild as in a zoo, but at least she'll be free. Spring is always a welcome arrival here in Amur Tigerland. The forest becomes colorful and awakens to new sound. Even song. Creatures like these Dabowski frogs play the tune of all life. For a week or two in May, the understory is set ablaze with the neon blossoms of Dahurian azaleas. All along the river basin becomes a kind of Eden. No wonder my son, the young male, feels attracted to this place. It's downstream from my territory, not too close to home. Could be the perfect spot for him to settle down, except for one thing. The wind delivers a not-so-subtle message. Another dominant male is ruler here. My son has learned his lessons well. A fight with this powerful stranger could be fatal. The future of Russia's tigers lies here in the modern world with people. Each September, Vladivostok, the biggest city in Tigerland, along with the Amur Tiger Center, a conservation group, host Tiger Day. It's the biggest celebration of the largest wild cat in the world the Amur Tiger. Good thing, too. By the time these children grow up, our feline fate will be sealed. It's a paradox of nature. 
Wherever the great predators thrive, you know the whole system is flourishing. Like you, we tigers need space to roam around and places to disappear into. It's the only way we can go about our business of living, undisturbed, hidden from view, supremely powerful. It all starts with the forest and the epic production of food these trees supply. Food that lures the paradise flycatcher to spend each summer gorging on insects and the explosion of boreal growth. The Siberian grouse is a homegrown native that munches on needles of spruce trees in winter switching to larch during warmer months. Our local wild boar are big on family. They're abundant, if you know what I mean. Speaking of abundance, when the Sika deer come into rut, we know winter can't be too far off. Boar and deer, both favorite prey of tigers, as well as our endangered cousins, the Amur leopard. And the lynx. Protect tigers and the land where we live save all of these other animals, too. Over the many years I've wandered this preserve, I've seen plenty of animals on the rebound. It's a remarkable comeback story. As for my son, the young male we've been keeping an eye on, his long, risky journey is finally paying off. He successfully navigated hundreds of miles west and north from where he was born to arrive exactly here. No other male claims this valley. It's all his. Welcome to the neighborhood. Lucky guy. The young female just happens to live here too. This male's patch of paradise just got a whole lot more promising. Primal woodland, ample prey, no rivals, plus a young tigress for company. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> 